hello, hello, and welcome to your Yoga for Abundance class. I am Hannah Stinson, CEO and founder of Healing with Hannah, and I am so grateful to be running these classes with uh, the support of Hope for Stomach Cancer. And of course, we run these classes in honor of Abby and, Le and, Abby and Lexi. It is their legacy for us to continue to do this work. Um, this is a beginner class. We're going to be moving very slow. I will be offering modifications. I will be making sure that we're in proper alignment for all the poses. But of course, if something doesn't feel right, you're just, you know, feeling a little bit of pain or tension or your body's just saying, no, I don't want to go there. You honor your body. You know your body best. I always like to say to uh, make sure to bring the practice to your body and not your body to the practice. So don't force anything you know, this just meet yourself where you're at. And we're going to move slow today. So, so I think that this will be great and just really open up our energy to call in endless abundance. And as a reminder, abundance is more than just money. It is happiness. It is connections. It is opportunities. It is relationships. Uh, it is beauty and nature. It is all the good things. So we're going to just be tapping into that energy a little bit and uh, we'll meet on the mat. And of course, make sure you have water. Um, and if you have some yoga blocks, please have them nearby. If you don't have yoga blocks, not to worry. You can grab some hardcover books um, and just we'll stack them up. Our props are just extension of our limbs. So there's no shame ever in using props. So meeting on the mat, we're just going to start in a seated position, cross-legged. If sitting cross-legged doesn't feel comfortable for you, you can have your legs out in front of you. You can just have them. Um, your knees bent, soles of the feet on the ground. But if sitting cross-legged works, we're gonna meet here. We're gonna start so simple, just with some neck stretches. So inhaling, exhaling, chin to chest, looking down. Inhaling to come back to center. Exhaling, looking up towards the sky, ceiling. Inhale back to center. Exhale, chin to chest. Inhale back to center, exhale. One more, just following your own breath. You really want to allow our inhales and exhales to guide us through these movements. And this time, instead of looking down, we're going to look over to the left. Inhale to center, exhale, looking over to the right. Two more on each side. Again, following your breath. The inhale always brings us back to center. Beautiful, and now we're gonna drop the left ear towards the left shoulder. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, left ear towards right shoulder. And again, two more on each side, just following your own neck. Now coming back to center, allow your left ear to drop towards your left shoulder again. You can stay exactly as we are, or you can begin to walk that right hand away from the body, just increasing the stretch down the right side of your neck and moving into the shoulder. Taking a few breaths here, and then again, staying exactly as you are, or maybe taking that right hand and reaching it for the left hip crease or holding onto your clothes. So this is going to deepen the stretch, so just be mindful of how it feels and listen to your body. And if you can, I invite you to close down your eyes and just focus on your breath. Just unwinding from your day. Showing your body some love, some nourishment, and some gentle movement. You have that bind, release. Bring your hand back in the way it came. And use your left hand to cradle your head as you come back to center to avoid a head rush. And then again, we'll do the other side. So just dropping the right ear to the right shoulder. Taking a couple breaths here. Move slow to signal to our body that we are safe. And then you can walk that left hand away. Start to feel into the stretch. Notice any sensations that are coming up. And if you took the bind on the other side, do so again on this side. So left hand reaches for right hip crease or 
you're close. And then closing down the eyes, and just focusing on the breath. And then letting that bind go and bringing your hand back in the way it came and using your right hand to cradle your head, coming back up. Now we're going to place our right hand beside us and inhale that left arm up and over. You want to keep your chest open here so we're not caving down. You can look towards the ceiling or the sky or your neck is feeling a little tired today. You can keep your gaze on the, on the ground, on your mat. You can begin to walk that right hand further out to deepen the stretch. If you so please, you can come down onto your forearm. But I just want you to take note and make sure that your left butt cheek isn't popping up. Make sure that your butt is still firmly planted because that might mean that you need to stay up on your hand. Again, just honoring your body. And then we're going to make some circles with our left arm. And you can go forward or backwards, doesn't matter which way. We're just going to move slow, getting into the shoulder, the left shoulder. Once you've made a few circles in one direction, you can switch and go in the other direction. And then allowing that left arm to bring you back up to center. And we're going to cross that left arm over the body and either it can rest on the outside of the right knee, or you can bring that left hand on top of your right hand as we come into a gentle twist. On your next exhale, we'll release and just windmill that hand over. So the left hand is planted firmly on the mat beside you. Inhale, the right arm up and over. Again, checking in, make sure you're not aiming your chest forward, keeping it open. And if you need to, you can look towards the ground if your neck is a bit of a break. And again, if you walk that right hand further away on the other side, do so with the left. Come to where it feels good for you, where you still feel a stretch, but you can also breathe with ease. And then looking down, we're going to start to circle that right arm now, getting the right shoulder. Doesn't matter which direction you go to start. Once you've done about three to five in one direction, we'll switch. Rotate the right arm the other way. And using that momentum to bring you back up, we'll do that twist again. So twisting towards the left. And again, your right palm can come on the outside of your left knee or right hand on top of left hand as we gently twist towards the left. Exhale to release. Now we're going to do some seated cat cows. I'm just going to face this way so you can see my spine better. I want you to bring your hands just resting on top of your knees. And we're just going to inhale, shoulders roll back, chest comes forward, a bit of an arch in our backs. And exhale, we ground the spine and ground the shoulders forward as the chin comes to the chest. Inhale, coming forward into your seated cow. Exhale, coming back to your seated cat. And these movements don't have to be big, they can be small. 
long as you feel that shift between the arch of the spine and the crown of the spine. Then coming back to your seated cow, so your chest is forward. We're just going to do some rolls, so just shifting your body towards the right, coming back through the rounded spine, shifting to the left, and then coming forward with that arched spine. And this might look funny, that's okay. I just want you to focus on how it feels. And again, your circles can be as big or as small as you like. You can move as fast or as slow as you like. Once you've gone about five rolls in one direction, we'll switch and we'll go the other way. Okay, so now we're going to meet in a tabletop position. Grab a sip of water if you need. It's very hot where you are, like it's driving. <laughs> so coming into tabletop, hands and knees position. You want to make sure that your wrists are directly underneath your shoulders and your knees directly underneath your hips, okay? And we're going to come into some cat cows now, regular cat cows. So you'll recognize this movement from what we just did seated. We're going to inhale, belly drops, gazes forward, the spine. Arch and then exhale, ground the spine, chin to chest, coming into cat. We're going to do this a few times again, following your breath. So, when we're in cat, we're in that exhale, we're in power, in the inhale. Again, you can move as slow or as fast. Next time you're in your cat, so you're around the spine, we're going to do those moving spinal rolls, but we're doing them from tabletop, so it's like a barrel roll now. So with that round of spine, you're shifting over to the right, letting the belly drop and come through center, and then rounding the back again. So you need to look at me just to see how this movement looks. You can, but again, it's not really about how it looks, it's about how it feels. So not only are we warming up the spine, we're also getting into the wrists and knee joints. We're just waking up the body, letting it know we are going to be doing some gentle movement. Once you've gone a few, direct, few times in one direction, switch and go the other way. Beautiful. One more. Okay, so meeting in tabletop, so neutral spine. So we want to make sure that we're not dropping the belly too much or we're not rounding the spine too much. So you're engaging your core here. I want you to lift the right leg. Foot is pointing towards the sky. So sole of the foot is like it's going to tap the ceiling. And all you're going to do is bring that. Right knee to tap behind the left. Inhale back up. Tap that knee. Inhale back up. Tap that knee. Inhale back up. Tap. Two more. Beautiful. Now just straighten out that right leg and bear with me. We're only going to hold this for a couple of seconds or a couple of breaths. If you can want, you can lift that left arm coming into a bird dog. Otherwise, you can keep the hand on the mat and just lift the leg. Beautiful. Exhale. Reset. Okay, other side. Inhale, lift that left leg. 
bending at the knee, sole of the left foot is pointing towards the ceiling or the sky, like you can tap it with your foot. And on that next exhale, left knee behind right. Inhale back up, exhale to tap. Inhale back up, exhale to tap. Beautiful. Two more. Beautiful. Now straighten out that left leg. Same like this. We're lifting that right arm, holding for a few breaths, engaging the core. Beautiful. Exhale, let that go. Grab a sip of water. And come into a child's pose. So, a few options here. If you want to stretch your low back, keep your knees closer together. If you want to stretch your hips, your knees will be as wide as your mat or a little wider than your hips. Walking your hands forward, coming down, forehead on the mat. Now, if the mat feels far away, you can stack your fists, have your forehead just resting on your, your fists. This is also a good time to use a block or a book or to bring your forehead to the left. We're gonna stay here in child's pose for about 10 breaths. So make sure that you are at a place in this posture where you can breathe with ease. So make the necessary adjustments to support yourself. As we stay in child's pose, I want you to focus on your breath and just notice if you're clenching your jaw, if you're holding any tension or tightness in your jaw. Do your best to let that go. Maybe sighing out the mouth on your exhales to assist in helping you into deeper relaxation. And then keeping everything as is, except for now we're going to thread that left arm underneath the right. Left ear or left side of the head comes to the mat. Getting into the shoulders while we're in child's pose. I like to think of this as a thread the needle child's pose hybrid. Beautiful. Again, release and switch to the other side. So right arm is going to thread on your left, right ear or right side of the head comes to the mat. Beautiful. 
Exhale, coming back to child's pose for two breaths. And then coming back to tabletop, before we come up into our downward dog, I just want to check in with something. So when we have our hands on the mat, I want to make sure your fingers are super spread apart, as far spread apart as you can be. They can be. We want to um, evenly distribute the weight on our hand, um, specifically the palms and the, um, the knuckles and the finger pads. We don't want to be dumping all our weight into our wrists. That's when injuries happen. So when we have our fingers spread really wide, we're making sure that the weight is even distributed. So make sure that your hands, sorry, your fingers are spread really wide. Tuck those toes and begin to shift up into a downward dog. Now, most people think when we're in downward dog, oh my goodness, I need to have straight legs. So they'll straighten their legs, but then they're really coming forward over their, uh, their wrists and their hands, this is where we have injuries, because this is not proper alignment. So what I want you to do, if you're feeling this is you, which usually is everyone when they have tight hamstrings or they're not used to practicing yoga often, I want you to bend those knees. See, as I bend my knees, how my upper body becomes more of a straight line. And that knee, your knees are really bent, that's okay. We actually want to have that knees in any forward fold as it's going to protect our hamstrings. So don't worry if you don't have straight legs and you're a downward dog. That is not the point, despite what some yoga practices and teachers might want us to think. So just want to make sure that we're all doing this best for our own bodies. Now in your downward dog, look forward and begin to walk your feet towards your hands. This might mean that you really have to bend your knees, right? So that you aren't feeling far away from the mat, that's okay. And then we're gonna hang out in the forward pull. So again, your legs do not have to be straight. If anything, I want you to have a tiny bend in your knees, even if you're very flexible. And you can stay exactly as we are, letting your head and neck go. We're really focusing on releasing in the low back right now, which again is why we want to have a bit of bend in our knees. This isn't a fully ham, this isn't fully a hamstring stretch. It is both that and a low back stretch. And you can keep your hands on the ground or maybe reach for opposite elbows, coming into a rag doll. This might intensify the stretch a little bit. So we're letting our upper body just hang heavy. And you can stay here and your rag doll in stillness. Or maybe you just want to rock your upper body a bit side to side. Moving slowly, it's okay if you wobble. It always helps, I find, to really make sure my feet are firmly planted in the mat. Sometimes when I'm in standing postures, I like to imagine tiny little roots growing out of the soles of my feet and into the earth. That really keeps me anchored. So letting that go, we are in ragdoll. And then slowly we're going to come up to stand, rounding the spine, vertebra by vertebra, no rush. Allowing your head to come up last. And we're meeting in mountain pose or tadasana at the top of the mat. Palms are facing forward. And even though it looks like we're just standing here, not doing much work at all, we're actually engaging almost every muscle in our body. This is an active standing posture. So just get rooted. Feel yourself rooting into the earth and also growing tall. And then bringing your hands to your hips, we're going to step the right foot back about two to three feet, depending on how tall you are, how long your legs are. I have quite long legs, so sometimes I have to step a little further. So you adjust as needed. But I want you to make sure that your right toes are facing the corner of the top of your mat, so the right corner of your mat. 
And then begin to bend into that left knee. Again, you might have to adjust your stance, depending. You want to make sure that your left knee is not going over your ankle. Okay. And once you feel sturdy, we can lift our arms above. This is warrior one. So in warrior one, we are still engaging our core. We're even engaging our hands and our fingers. This is an active posture. Helping us connect with our inner warrior. And also it's a wonderful posture to do to increase your mood. So if you're kind of in a funk, if you're feeling a little black, I always suggest to my clients to do warrior one for anywhere from five to 25 breaths. Beautiful. And exhale, hands come back to the hips and just step forward. Take a breath in mountain. And then again, hands come to hips. On your next exhale, step that left foot back, making sure that the left toes are pointing to the corner of your mat on the left side. And then bending into that right knee, adjusting your stance as needed. And when we're in warrior one, we want our torso to be over our hips, so we're not really leaning forward, we're not leaning back. Find that middle ground. It's also going to help you stay sturdy and stable. And when you once you feel good, you root it, arms overhead. Really rooting down into your feet. Growing tall, your spine, your arms. We don't want our arms reaching or anything that brings our shoulders up to our ears. We want to make sure we have that space there. Beautiful. Exhale, hands from the hips. Inhale, step forward. Take a breath in mountain. Grab a sip of water. Beautiful. Okay, inhaling arms overhead. Exhaling, we're going to swan dive forward from hinging at the hips. So we're bending the knees as we come forward down, hands come to the mat. Again, we can have really bent knees for this. That's okay. On the next inhale, we're going to step that right foot back. Knee comes down, low lunge. So bring your hands to your hips to start. I want you to get sturdy here. So this can feel like a lot if you have tight quads. So just be mindful. And we want to make sure that, again, we're not jumping, let's not stick it out. We're engaging our low core and we're tucking that tailbone. And we're also engaging our inner thighs. That's what's going to keep us sturdy here. So you decide, you can stay exactly as we are, hands on hips. Maybe you want to bring your hands on top of your left thigh. Or maybe you inhale, arms overhead. Now, if this is a lot for your right knee, your right knee starting to feel a little bit um, sore from this, you can always roll your mat to give yourself extra cushion. Exhale, let's bring our hands back down to the mat. This is where you might need blocks or books. So, Take a moment now to grab them. When you're working with blocks, the great thing about it is you have options for heights, like to say baby bear, mama bear, papa bear. Um, but again, if you're working with books, you might need to stack a couple. Because we're gonna heel toe, heel toe, that left foot forward. So the left leg is straight, micro bend in that left knee or big bend in that left knee, if this feels like a lot. We're coming into half split, so this is um, not only opposed but stretching our hamstrings, stretching our piriformis and our hip, um, our hip flexors and our low back. So it's a lot. So I want you to honor your body. If you, of course, I'm leaning forward, but you might be up here. That's okay. I started yoga 14 years ago. I definitely was not where I am today, so it takes time. Um, but if you have it in you to walk yourself a little bit forward, to pull forward over that left leg, you can. And remember, these are all options. 
don't even have to do any of them if it's not in your practice. Beautiful. On your next inhale, come up and out. Move your blocks or your books, your props off to the side and bring that foot back in. This time we're going to let that right leg go back a little further. And as we come back up, we're coming into a low runner's lunge. So this time it's okay to have your knee tracking over your ankle, but you want to make sure you're not dumping all your weight. You're still engaging your glutes and your low belly. That's good to make sure that you're not dumping, but you're still getting the stretch. You can have your hands resting on top of your left thigh. Or inhale, arms overhead. Palms come together. Staying like this or bending at the elbows, prayer to the back of the head. Beautiful. On your next exhale, coming out. Add some hands on the mat. Step back into, actually come back into the tabletop. Tap those toes. Lift up into a downward dog. Take a breath in your down dog. Remember, bend knees. And then on your next inhale, looking forward, either walking or stepping your feet towards your hands. Inhale, slowly come up to stand, vertebra by vertebra. Head comes up last. Take a breath in mountain. Grab a sip of water if you need. And then we're going to inhale, arms overhead. Exhale again, swan dive forward. You can't the hips bending the knees, hands come to the mat. Inhale, step the left foot back, left knee comes to the mat. Doing the same sequence on the other side. So again, bring your hands to your hips first. Remember, if your knee is bothering you, you can roll the mat or put a blanket under your knee just to get that extra cushion. Check in, make sure that, oh, see, I even have wrong, not wrong the line. There we go. Want to make sure you have that right angle. <laughs> so make sure you're feeling steady and then decide where you want your arms to be. Beautiful, on your next exhale, bring your hands back to the mat, grab your props, if you use them on the other side, use them again on this side, and heel toe, heel toe, that right leg forward. Again, right leg is as straight as it can be, but always good to have a, at least a micro bend in your knee. If not, you can have a big bend. And again, you might be up here, like just be practicing your balance while also doing this stretch. So if that's what's happening, you are working extra hard and I'm very proud of you. Otherwise, if you have it in you, it's in your practice, you move. You know, your, your flexibility level, you can start to roll forward over that right leg. Hands can be on the props, the blocks, or the mat. On your next inhale, move your palms out of the way. You're using them and heel toe, heel toe your foot back in and just slide it back in, whatever you feels better. And then let that left leg draw further back. You come up. This time, low runners left the other side. So again, your knee can come over that ankle and make sure you're engaging your glutes and your low belly and your core. To the side, hands resting. On the thigh or inhale, arms up, palms come together, 
bending at the elbows and prayer to the back. Exhale, let that all go and just come to the mat and just come back into the tabletop and then push back into child's pose. This time, have your knees closer together so we're stretching the low back. Beautiful. Coming up, we're going to come into puppy pose. So this one can be a lot to just move slow and have your prop nearby. So our knees are, or sorry, our hips are staying over our knees. Now we're just walking our hands forward. This is a really nice stretch for the armpits and the chest. You can just have your forehead resting on the mat here. Maybe you have your forehead on a block or on a pillow or on a blanket or on a book. If you know, you can go further. You can come on to your chest with your chin resting on the mat. Please do not try to push yourself into this pose because it could be pretty intense. So just go to where your body is letting you know you can go today. Wherever you are in your next inhale, walk yourself back in. We're going to then tuck our toes. We're coming to sit up on our toes. This is a toe stand stretch, so it's a lot um, if you aren't used to stretching your feet this way. So I would say it's nice to have a block in front of you or a prop to kind of relieve some of that pressure. Maybe this feels really easeful to you. I don't like the word easy, but easeful. Um, and you can just hang out here. You're going to start to feel this all through your toes and soles of your feet. And the wonderful thing about this stretch, of course, we're stretching our feet and our ankles, and we don't do this nearly enough. Um, but you're also um, getting into the meridians in your feet. You're for, if you are familiar with um, reflexology or traditional Chinese medicine or acupuncture, this is a really good one. We're going to stay here for a couple more breaths. Remember, if it starts to be too much, you can always ease out of it for a few and then come back in. Beautiful. Coming out of that, we're going to bring the tops of our feet to the mat and tap them out. Let all of that go. Beautiful. Probably my favorite part. Of that, um, okay, coming to sit on your butt. We're going to come into a butterfly. So when you're in butterfly, your feet are touching and your legs are in like a diamond shape and your feet don't have to be this close to your butt. Okay. If anything, I'd like you to have a bigger diamond. Who doesn't want that? <laughs> so have a bigger diamond and just have your feet or sorry, your hands um, on your feet, and you're, you're almost like opening your feet up like a book, if that's what you're imagining as you hold your feet. And just begin to flutter your butterfly. So just gently moving the legs up and down. This is going to get into the hips. This is what we call ballistic stretching. So using movement like this in different postures to help us just get into them a little bit deeper. Beautiful. You can stop fluttering your butterfly. And I'm going to give you the option. So we'll just turn things. So you can make this um, active or passive. If you're making this an active posture, that means as you're folding forward, you're doing your best not to round your spine. Doing your best to keep a flat back. And that might mean 
but you don't go very far. That's okay. It doesn't matter how far you go. It just matters that you can feel the stretch in your groin, your low back. Or you can make this a passive stretch and just pull forward by rounding the spine, dropping the chin. Whichever pose you're in, in this butterfly, active or passive butterfly, make sure that you still let go of your head and neck. So they're just hanging out, they're not doing any work. On your next inhale, slowly come up and out. And then bringing that right leg out and the sole of the left foot uh, is just resting on the inside of the right thigh. Right leg is straight. And you can either have, this might be a good one to have a prop, just so you can eat it. You have your prop in front of you, placing your hand on your prop, we're gonna lift up and over. Or if you want, you can have your forearm on your top or no top. We're going to inhale that left arm up and over. Coming into a really delicious side body stretch. Similar to what we did at the beginning, but just a little bit more of a full body one. It's sort of getting down into the left piriformis, the left hip. And then all through our intercostal muscles. And our intercostal muscles are the muscles around our lungs that help us breathe. So it's always great to give these ones a stretch. If you want to roll that left wrist, you can. Maybe there's some pretty cracks in a lot of these. Just keep And again, I want you to check in and make sure you're not dumping forward, that your chest is still open. And then just keeping everything as is, except for now you're going to reach that left arm away from the body, flexing the left hand. Beautiful. Coming up and out of this really slow, using your right hand to cradle your head as you come back up to avoid getting a head brush. And then sole of the left foot is coming to the mat. Knee is bent. We're facing that right leg now. Your left arm is going to come behind you, acting like a second spine. And that right arm is going to hug the left leg. We're coming into a twist. Now, just to give your head and neck a break, just look down towards your left hand. Beautiful. On your next exhale, release. Give yourself a bit of a comfortable twist to the other side. And then let that right leg, or sorry, that left leg fall down towards the mat. We're still facing the right side. We're coming into head to knee pose or Janu Sarasasana. You do not have to get your head to your knee. Um, you want to make sure you have a straight or a flat back or a flat in the back of the head as you pull forward in this one. So inhale, spire is tall. Exhale, just begin to walk your hands alongside your leg, coming down, coming forward. And again, you can be up here. Maybe you're feeling that knee stretch, your back, your hamstrings, your hips. Otherwise, walk yourself to that point where you can still breathe, but you really are getting that nice stretch. This is also one where you can have a bend in the right knee if your hamstrings are feeling really tight. And then just let your head and neck go. Let them hang heavy wherever you are in this pose. There is no right or wrong.
beautiful. On your next inhale, walk yourself back up and just gently switching sides. So the left leg extends, sole of the right foot comes in the inside of the left thigh, and maybe you want your prop. And I honestly, for these ones, I like to start with the prop, and then as my body eases into the pose, I will remove it. Um, so it doesn't you know, matter how flexible you are. It's just about doing what's best for your body. So inhale that right arm up and over, Sometimes you might need to adjust when you get there. And again, maybe you want to roll out the right wrist, releasing really those tricks and traps. And keeping everything as is, but now reaching that right arm away from the body. Keep letting that go when you see your left hand, give your head. Turning to face the left leg now, so sole of the right foot comes to the mat, right foot is bent, right arm comes behind, acting like the second spine, and then hugging that right leg with the left arm and twisting. And again, just give your head and neck a break. So look down towards your right hand. And then on your next exhale, let that go, pop your twist. And then let that right leg fall down. And we're facing the left leg now. We're coming into the same pose on the other side, but even on the other side. So inhale, spine is tall. Exhale, start to walk your hands forward. Whatever feels good today. This side might feel completely different from the other side, and that's totally normal. So just remember that you might have to honor that and not go as far, or maybe you can go a little deeper. Wherever you are, let your head and neck hang heavy. On your next inhale, slowly walk yourself back up. We're going to come down onto our backs. So, sole to the feet are on the mat near the bottom of your mat. Knees are bent. And just slowly coming down onto your back. Bringing your knees in, hugging them in towards your body. Just Gently rock from side to side, giving your sacrum and your low back a bit of a massage. Coming to center, bringing your legs together, bringing your arms out to a T shoulder height, and letting your legs fall towards the right side or coming into a, a twist. So if this feels like too much, having both of your um, knees bent, you can have your bottom leg straight. That will that might help a little bit. So you might need to play around and see what's best for your body. Otherwise, we're going to let our left ear fall towards the mat, looking over that left arm, and bringing the right hand to the low belly, and just coming back to the breath. Feeling your inhales and exhales moving through your body allowing them to help you sink deeper into relaxation, 
slowing down the breath, slowing down the practice. On your next inhale, release that right hand. Head comes back to center, legs come back up. Take a breath in. And then exhale the legs over to the left or over to the other side. Again, adjusting as you need. And then letting that right ear fall towards the mat, looking over the right arm. Left hand comes to the low belly, coming back to the breath. On your next inhale, release, come back to center. Give yourself one final hug. And then exhale, letting your body come down into Shavasana or corpse pose. Legs are long, feet are as wide as the mat. Arms are out wide enough that your armpits can breathe. Giving yourself the next. 10 to 15 breaths to just be still. To allow yourself to soak up all of the benefits from our practice today. Showing yourself gratitude with your breath for showing up to nourish your body your mind, and your spirit. Slowly begin to deepen your breath. Maybe bring small movements back to your fingers and toes with length. Your fingers and toes are rolling out your ankles and rolling out your wrists. Bring your legs together and your arms overhead. Take a big stretch. Exhale, release and bend the knees to the soles of the feet are on the mat and roll over to one side using the bottom arm as a pillow. Take a moment in this fetal position. A position that symbolizes new beginnings, knowing that you can step into the next version of your most powerful self and time to come out of this posture. Slowly coming up to a seated position, doing your best to keep your eyes closed if you can, bringing your hands to prayer at heart center. Smile in your head if that feels comfortable. The divine light in me honors the divine light in you. Namaste. Thank you, thank you, thank you for practicing. It's my pleasure to guide and teach as always, and I hope you enjoyed. See you soon.